hello there and good evening and welcome. Well, it might be evening wherever you are. Good morning, good afternoon, good night, whatever it is. Welcome back to ADSR. My name is Paul Nolan. If you haven't seen me before, I'm a fairly regular presence on these live streams. It's always a pleasure to be here with you guys to guide you through the very best in music production, whether it be plugins, sample packs, synth presets, production techniques, you name it, it's all here at ADSR. So thank you very much for joining us. It's going to be a fun time over the next 60 minutes or so, because it may or may not have escaped you that it's actually ADSR's birthday at the moment, and we are in full-on celebratory mood. And over the last while, we've had a bit of a sale, and we are coming towards the back end of that. And what we're going to do is go through some tools tonight where you can use these incredible tools, which are all in-house to ADSR, by the way, because they make awesome tools, basically, as well as provide you with all this knowledge over at ADSRsounds.com. And speaking of ADSRsounds.com, that is exactly where we're going to head right now which is over to the website. And as you can see, we've got four days and 16 hours, 16 minutes and counting-ish around about, well, the 1st of August, the sale comes to an end. And the amazing tools that we're going to look at tonight for making melodic techno, progressive house maybe, let's face it, it's all just good emotional dance music, whatever it is that you want to call it. We will be using all of these beautiful tools from ADSR, MIDI Grid, Hexel, and of course, Drum Machine. And I'm going to get into a Drum Machine expansion that I have specifically made for Progressive House, Melodic Techno, whatever it is that you want to call it. And they are all on sale at the moment. So check out the chat because the team are going to post some links on what's at stake and what is on offer and everything else. And you can see here, 29%, 24% off, up to 70% off some stuff here. Just a great, great sale that they've got going over there. So celebrate the ADSR birthday in style by picking up these awesome features. So lovely, lovely, lovely stuff. Hello to Jai Zaza straight away. We're going to keep the chat on screen this evening because I want to kind of interact with you guys a little bit more as we go through, keeping it nice and light and fun around these parts, which is what we try and do. So we're starting in Ableton, of course, home base, if you will. And we are starting with a completely blank session because the first thing I'm going to do is give you a little bit of a... Uh, an idea as to what my actual workflow is with ADSR Drum Machine, because honestly, you know, this has become something that I use pretty often and something that I've found has sped my workflow up quite a lot. I feel like I've said that a lot recently because we've covered Drum Machine quite a bit in recent times since Steve and the team at ADSR, you know, gave me a look at it and I've just absolutely fallen in love with it. So I'm in a folder on my hard drive which is called the palette and the palette is where all of my custom sounds live so i'm one of those nerds that basically saves presets of almost every sound that he makes which is a good tip for any of you guys out there trying to make a specific sound for yourself so within the drums folder i've actually got a an ableton live set with a channel in it called drum machine multi so one of the things about drum machine as we get going into this is that you'll see it's incredibly flexible from a routing perspective and i could sit here now and set it all up but i'll be honest with you it's 10 minutes of me flicking around menus and i don't want to do that every time i start making a record and i'm sure you guys don't either so what i've done is saved all this in advance into my palette so if i want to use drum machine as a multi-channel all i have to do is take this particular channel drag and drop it in here and the rest will unfold and as you can see straight away things get a little bit intense so what we're going to do here we're going to delete these two audio channels because we're not going to need them right now we're going to keep these midi channels because we're going to add hexel our midi sequencer and midi grid the other midi sequencer that we do which i've also done a pack for as well which we'll be looking at both of them tonight and 
will use them in tandem with Drum Machine. So just to kind of break the signal flow down a little bit, I've got Drum Machine in a group, which means that I can do any form of processing I want on the entire group. So if I decide to EQ, put drum processing, filtering, compression, saturation, whatever I want, virtual tape machines, the whole nine yards, I can do that over the entire group. However, what's going to happen here is we have the main drum machine channel here with the plugin itself. And you have drum machine right here. And if I just go to the mixer for a second, because, you know, again, it's fairly self-explanatory here. Maybe some of you have seen it before. And what you can see is that each individual sound has been sent to what's called a direct output. So the kick and the first plucked sound here on the C-sharp one, going through one and two, out one and two, and then over all the way through to output 16. And then you can have buses that you can work within Drum Machine, and then you have the sends and returns, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and they're coming through the main output. So we might tweak that as we go through, because we might want to start using other sounds as we kind of go through this whole situation. So these direct outputs relate to these audio channels. So as you can see, audio from number four, ADSR Drum Machine, drop down menu, number two, and it goes through 16. So basically it's 16 stereo outs. So the main kick will come through the main plugin channel and then the rest of these guys will take care of the rest. So again, to evolve this even further, I could rename the audio channels, what it is that I'm working on. Again, that first channel could be kick and everything else, just to make it even quicker, even more immediate. I personally like to keep it a little bit light. So, and a bit more flexible. What we're going tonight is we're going into this melodic techno drum kit expansion or drum machine expansion, I should say. And I've made 10 kits for this. And I had an absolute ball doing all kinds of sound design. Pretty much every sound you hear, well, every sound you hear by and large, it has been made from scratch, including some stuff that I've recorded myself. I've used various kick generators. I've used various synths. I've used drum synths within the likes of Machine. I've even used a little bit of AI assistance to mold certain drum sounds to give a little bit of really interesting kind of um, tonal variance, basically. So the result is 10 kits that will support you in various different styles of melodic techno or, again, progressive house. Some of them have a slightly dubbier angle. Some of them are a bit more big floor filler type stuff. You know, very much, again, in that afterlife taylor voss masano kind of style that seems to be so big at the moment and you know kit six has, has loaded up as a default so we could go through some of the kits and again as it is with drum machine all the sounds within these kits are already loaded up lock and load ready to go so from here we've got these 16 sounds and you can hear straight away you know we've got some really interesting sounds Nice clap, some nice plucks. So what I've done is I've put a whole different style of this together where there is some synth stabs, some musical elements that can be used as well. Each kit has fully 16 sounds of various different elements, including these toms, for example, synth stabs, and then these really kind of ghostly sort of atmospheric stuff that I've put in, which are like drones that, you know, come in in the background. So really, really cool. And then the sequencer, each of the 10 kits has 16 patterns, which, you know, allow you to do some fairly comprehensive stuff. So even if we just start with pattern one, just hit play. And if I just pump the tempo a little bit to 124, which is my preferred for this genre. So you've got that kind of like, you know, triplety kind of like scattergun kind of like synth stabs going on, which is quite good. Again, you can use various different keys on the keyboard. So I'm just using A there, S to select pattern two, and there's a progression to them all. So you hear the 16th note shaker there, adds the open hat on pattern three, get the toms involved there. And then 
drop it into something completely different. So there's kind of like kits within kits because you've got a second sort of sub kick there as well, as well as the main kick. And again, what I've tried to do here is insert as much of the production process as possible into all of this. In the background, say for example, if I was to play pattern eight, which I think is quite a full sound, if we actually put the plugin away for a second, you'll see everything's working quite nicely, including if I pop back to seven there, kick in. All of those channels are already spread out, and then I can go about basically doing whatever I want. So again, I could further apply EQ, processing, sends and returns, all of that, everything that I've got to work with within Ableton is there right within the drum machine multi-channel. So again, one of the things you can do is when you have drum machine, copy this setup, save it into whatever folder structure you have, and then you can just, as I've just done, parachute this straight in. And then you, you're at so much at an advanced point of view if you've got your custom kits already set up, you've basically got grooves. And again, if you've got musical ideas to get you going, then it can be really simple to just parachute in a whole kit, maybe retune some of the sounds, maybe tweak some of the sequences, and you are truly and utterly off to the races. And again, for those of you who may not know, the great advantage of working with something like Drum Machine is that you can literally drag, let's say, for example, if Pattern 7 was something we chose to work with, what we could do is just click and drag on the number seven and boom, there you go. That means you've now opened access up to Ableton's groove pool. It does have its own swing, which I actually think is really good. So I've swung things by about 5% here. And you can obviously use all the Ableton grooves, the groove pool, extracting grooves, all that stuff from your favorite records. So from here, we've got a two bar loop. Again, you've got up to four pages. So it does mean that you can go up to four bars. You know, it's pretty cool, you know, super cool. So really, really nice, really immediate. And again, just really beautifully like considered how this plugin has developed. You know, I, I kind of like, I kind of like, and it's like a Ableton's drum rack on steroids, basically. Do you know what I mean? It's like if uh, if drum racks were allowed to, you know, get on the source, basically, this is what it would be. And you know, again, you've got the full mixer, the multi-channel element, and again, just the immediacy of it is absolutely fantastic. And there's other elements to it as well, which I absolutely love. Like, you know, each sound, you've got your own onboard filter, your own onboard input filters and EQs. The drive sounds absolutely fantastic, as does the compressor. Just to give you an idea, there's your kick there. If I turn the compressor and the drive off, you'll get the idea. You know, it's still meaty, but it adds that next layer and that next level of presence and really does, you know, help things really come through really nicely. So from here, you know, we can strip the patterns out, we can use, you know, the piano roll. We're gonna stay within drum machine just to keep things quick because we are gonna move on into MIDI grid and into Hexel as well. And one of the things I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna start with something a bit more basic. So again, through patterns nine, 10 and 11, let's play those for a second. So I've put in these almost like kind of arpeggios and you'll hear that little rrrr there as well because you've got the ability to, if I go all the way to page two, you can basically, you know, double up on the triggers essentially. So what you hear at the end of that two bar loop is this double up. So it just adds to it. So one of the things we can do is possibly use this as a bit of a baseline and be able to retune the sample to whatever it is that we go in MIDI grid and in Hexel. You know, there's all that to go. So that's pretty cool. And from there as well, obviously you've got the ability to, if you don't like that sound, you can not go on so much the kit level here. You can go to the actual sound itself. You can swap other sounds out. Now you can turn the auto load off, which is as of the last update, which we covered in a previous live stream. So if you really want to get on top of all the new features 
in the latest version of Drum Machine, then watch that stream. But you can turn the auto load off, which means you can kind of audition before you load in. So you might like that, you might like that sound, as well as the others. So there's something really nice there. And then maybe, you know, we might want to take something from another kit. You've got these types of sounds. There's a bass. That could be quite an interesting one. And again, this just gives us a bit of a, an idea of what else is coming. Nice sort of trancey stab there. Probably not the best one for us. So yeah, you could actually try something like that, for example. So you could load that in, you could go through that. And again, each sound, each kit has 16 sounds, 16 patterns, so there's plenty to, to kind of follow up on. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to pattern 11, and we're going to strip some of these sounds out, but we'll listen to them, and then we'll jump into MIDI grid. Because we've got that nice sort of 16th note element going on there, which is quite cool. And I do like the the kind of the rim shot, and we've got that other kind of pluck sound. I'm going to strip that out for now and maybe use it as a bit more of an incidental sound. And we're just going to go, actually, I'm going to keep this pattern in place, but I'm just going to mute this for a second. So you can click on the little headphone icon, and we've got a nice, just basic kick and a 16th note. This shaker, by the way, is something I've actually recorded myself from scratch. I have all sorts of percussion instruments lying around this studio, including the likes of tambourines, seed pod shakers, and literally what you're hearing there is just a little egg shaker that cost me like a dollar, basically. So a lot of people say to me, oh, you know, in your tracks or, you know, in your productions, like, where do you get your shaker loops from? And I'm like, a microphone and an egg shaker. Like, it's not difficult. Like, and actually, I find it gets a much better feel if you use live recorded shakers or indeed if you've got a decent microphone. I mean, this is an okay mic, the uh, Audio Technica AT2020. That's only about a hundred bucks. Get something like this and a decent audio interface and play in, actually play and record in your own sequences. Actually perform percussion on your own records, it actually makes a massive difference and I think it sounds much, much better. Really, really does, really, really does. So you've got the benefits of some of my kind of custom recordings in this as well. And you know, you've got this nice, nice element there. And it's a little bit, you know, on the nose. So we could go into the velocity and what we can do is every fourth, we can add in just a little bit of movement on the velocities here just to give it that extra sort of natural kind of realism so we'll just do that and again it's just astounding how quick it is so maybe a bit further down on some of them just to give it that kind of almost like a side chainy kind of effect very cool Cool. So we've got that as a starting point. So we can now flesh out with the rest of the kit. So again, the patterns can be as complex or as simple as you want. You can, again, post them straight in, or this just gives you the basis of something. So we're going to go into the plugins folder, and we're going to go out, and we're going to go into ADSR, and we are actually going to post in a MIDI grid next. So MIDI grid is... An, an amazing thing and you're going to see exactly how powerful it is and again this is another one that's kind of snuck its way into my heart as a producer of this style of music and again the guys at ADSR asked me to do a expansion for MIDI grid which you're about to see as well so I'm going to just click on here open up the pack and you can see what you get which is you know, a huge amount of presets. I think it's like 55 in total, including some of my personal favorites that I've made uh, straight from, you know, my own production sessions and then melodies, leads, ops, etc. So what we're going to do, there's one that I've had my eye on for a little bit. So I'm going to have a little look at which one it is. Uh, where are we? Oh, three. I know it starts with a three. It is... 
called Complete Takeoff. There you go. And as I said, I've been quite prodigious about it in terms of, you know, detail oriented. So actually, as you can see, this one that I'm starting with here, this bass preset, uh, it's in D minor. So now I kind of know that the track's going to be in D minor because I'm making this decision. And again, we can kind of go into how this works in a certain amount. Uh, but what we actually need now is a synth to be able to trigger it and to have this pattern trigger the synth. So rather than reach for the expensive toys, I thought what we could do is just start with a wavetable and just be really, you know, clever about how we make something like this. So we need to connect MIDI grid to wavetable. So what we're going to do is going to go into the MIDI from menu, select the MIDI grid, and then MIDI grid again, turn the monitor to in, and then basically we are now connected. So what you'll hear in both of these cases, you've got that sine wave being played. So what we'll do is we'll just create a nice sound out of all of this. And again, what you'll notice is as I kind of sculpt the sound a little bit, I'm going to go for something like a pluck, maybe something with a bit of a Reese element to it, maybe something with a bit of unison, that kind of thing, and then play around with it a little bit, maybe try and fatten it up and make it the melodic basis of the track. What you'll notice is, is how MIDI grid comes to life. So again, the actual scale of the grid is D minor, as you can probably see from across the top here. And these triggers, as I like to call them, you know, when they get to the top or the bottom edge or the side, depending upon what direction the travel's in, they will play a note. So depending upon how far away you stagger it on an 8x8 grid, what you'll get is a certain amount of movement, a certain amount of melodic element as I close my email program so it does not bother us again. <laughs> Apologies for that. And effectively, you know, you'll get, you'll get the vibe and you'll see it. So I'm just going to shorten the ADSR for starters. And then start with one oscillator. I'm going to go to a sawtooth wave. Detune that by a few semitones. Shorten that release. the second oscillator. We'll go an octave up. But this time we'll be tuned. Matrix. We'll just set envelope two up here, and then we'll add in there. Maybe go for an MS2 filter mode. Add a bit of drive. Get a bit of beef going there. Add a little unison. Get a bit of width going in there. The tune's a bit too much there. Still 
love the Ableton reverb. Let's go super wide on the stereo. Cut the low end off. There we go. And this is the, again great thing going back to the drum machine and using it in combination with MIDI grid is the fact that we've got very, very quickly, I mean, what, with explanations, we've been going about 15 minutes, 20 minutes into the stream, and we're already, you know, way down the track. We've got our sounds ready, we've got our main sort of a hook, and we can then build from there. So, again, what we can do is take this pattern and then move back into this view, and what the thing, well, I mean, we might not even have space for the ARP now, but that's okay, because we might be able to fit it in in another way. So we can actually just delete that pattern, and then we can start by taking pattern 11, and then dragging and dropping it into Drum Machine, and then that's almost our starting point. So from there, we can start to think about other sounds. So we've got the pluck there, we might want to add in. We've got a clap. This low tom's quite cool. Obviously, the shaker's doing its thing. That shaker's more like an open hat, so we might want to add that in next. So we can use variations of this pattern. Maybe what we can do is copy it and actually use it to paste into pattern 12 so we can keep track of everything. And then add in our kind of shaker style open hats. Just pluck that out a little bit, make it a bit rounder. And we're off. And again, the great power of using drum machine this way is that I've got total control of each individual element. So I can go into audio effects, I can maybe drop an EQ. Another trick that I like to do here is to kind of double up on hi-hats. So one of the things I'll do is I'll put a simple delay on here and I like to kind of put the dry wet to about 20%, 25%, something like that. Uh, put the feedback around there, something like that, and then have one set to one sixteenth note on the right-hand side, and on the other side, left-hand side, three sixteenths. So we get this lovely... You don't get that in ping-pong mode, doesn't quite work quite as well. And you get this lovely, groovy movement. Again, I can add in a bit of a high pass filter. Of course, this can be done on the plugin, but sometimes it's just as convenient to actually do it on here. Uh, use Ableton if that's what you prefer. Of course, this then opens up the world of third party plugins. So if you're a fan of something like Fab Filter Pro Q3, for example, you're good to go. And again, just from a, a workflow situation. That's cool. Um, again, we've got the send one and twos, and this is where, you know, Drum Machine has its own onboard reverb and delay. Now, because I'm starting to use the reverbs within Ableton, I might choose to actually mute them, which is very simple to do here, just to make sure that it doesn't bleed into the main output, which actually, you know, it's going to share it with the kick and stuff like that. So if you are really wanting those you know, those sounds of the send and return, and they are great sounds. You know, you can apply them to any of the other sort of outputs, essentially, and you can basically make room for them by not using some sounds. You've got those 16 direct outs, basically, to do whatever you like with them. So there you go. So from here, we'll have those off for now. Just run into the red a little bit, so I'll just turn that down a touch. Turn the headphones off. And now you can start to appreciate where MIDI grid is coming into its own. And again, exactly the same as Drum Machine. 
with midi grid what i can do is i can take this over a four bar export then to drag and drop it in done there you go so very 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 cool so now that you can literally see what is being played what you could do is actually drop that in the midi grid turn the monitor to auto maybe even turn midi grid off and now you've got the ability to really play around with it and we could even do things like getting into like polyrhythms and stuff like this so let's say for example we take the first three sixteenth notes we get into something interesting and maybe we start it from where the g is and you hear that cycle through and again you can use that with like odd numbered amounts of 16th notes so things like five adds so much complexity again we could go for seven and just gives us a really interesting extra mode to kind of work with so very very cool and again if we wanted to kind of open things out a little bit we now have this as an overall four bar loop and what i'm going to do is just move everything back a touch there we've got that in the pocket that means we can maybe get a little bit more experimental with midi grid which means we can add in a redirect at a certain point in order to see whether or not we get some interest in variation and a bit of randomness. some interesting stuff but i think there's some more interesting places we could put things so let's try here that's cool and as you can see the redirect is taking the trigger that hits it the one directly beneath it here and is redirecting it left and right maybe it holds it in a different position then moves it up and then kind of returns it to its original position so it's quite interesting from a generative perspective that we've now got that locked in that first midi clip now we can get something a bit more experimental and throw in a little bit of randomness to it as well very cool and we can return back into drum machine got these like little crunchy kind of ripple effects we could add in maybe the atmospherics as well just bubbling in the background as a drone So we're in roughly the right key as well. So the good thing is, is that we don't have to actually retune a lot of those drum sounds or a lot of those stabs, I should say, because basically the stabs, you know, they can be retuned by being in this particular menu. And obviously, you know, you can see it's up to anyway for the kit. So I could bring that down. I could change that, get a little bit of an, 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 an interval going, I should say. And it just makes you know things a little bit more musically pleasing it's a little bit bare that sound now because of the way i've worked with the reverbs so i can send it uh, 
the reverb. There we go. And the delay. And we can just replace that delay with a an echo, which is probably one of my favourite plugins in Ableton. Absolutely adore this thing. And I love the sound of it, these big dubby tape delays. Very reminiscent of other plugins like, you know, uh, H delay, for example. Um, and we get that lovely dubby. There we go. It's cool. And I can take that redirect out and just have it back to normal. So yeah, so we've got that as a starting point. So again, good groove, really, really easy to get going. We've got lots of other sounds to layer in. We could open the sequencer again, drag and drop our pattern 12, and away we go. Sounds like this may be not so relevant. So what's really cool is you can, you know, hit the dice, basically, and it'll pick another sound from the kit or we can go into another kit. Not bad. So again, that can be great when you're a bit low on inspiration. Wow. I forgot how meaty some of these sounds are. Wowzers. Bad. Yeah, and something like that, a bit more hollow, could be quite cool. So we can load that in. Play around with that a little bit. Add some nice reverb. There we go. Clap, maybe we want something that's a bit more... See, there's that kind of sound that I'm looking for which has a bit more crunch to it and actually this sound was developed with a little bit of AI assistance where it, I used an AI plugin uh, to actually kind of twist the drums a little bit and kind of take them into a different realm based on certain parameters so very very interesting really really cool and great for creating original sounds so this is a clap that I built from scratch and then mangled it using you know some of this new emergent sort of tech you know AI tech basically so quite a useful thing. So we can use that as almost like an effect. So again, we can use that maybe at the end on that pattern. And again, get that. And again, big reverb. Fend off. Give it more of a dubby feel. One thing I feel like we need is a ride. So maybe we can take one of these unused cells and let's look because there are rides in the pack. I did make some. Not bad. That's a bit more like it. Okay. So we go into the mixer, just boost the level on that. Of course, that's going into the level of the, the channel as well. So maybe we can add in as an eighth note, just to add that extra little bit of drama, extra little bit of tension. And of course, just slightly 
on every main beat. We kind of just give everything its own little bit of velocity. This is quite cool. Some lower than others, of course. I love low, I love lower pitched rides because they kind of just say techno to me. So uh, I think they're, they're a nice aggressive option. Now there is a lot of low end on this, so I can actually cut using the input filter. Add a bit of drive. I always have this with rides. I can never decide what the right pitch is. Anybody else have that? It's annoying, isn't it? I like the lower tone because, again, it's more techno. I like the higher tone because it's a bit more musical and I can never make my mind up as to what they are. So, you know, welcome to my personal hell. The rides are my snares, basically. <laughs> yeah, I like it then. That's cool. Okay. So obviously, you know, we've gotten like a good 41 minutes in and we haven't even looked at Hexel yet. So what I want to do is, is maybe round this bit of an idea off by including Hexel in the process. So Hexel is another form of MIDI sequencer, which is really, really cool. So what it does that's slightly different to MIDI Grid is just how it organizes itself in terms of the notes. So what you'll notice is with Hexel, it's basically got like this kind of like honeycomb kind of grid and what's really cool about it is that it arranges itself in fifths so say for example from you know here from a for example you know it will jump by degrees of like fifths and you know it goes from obviously d to a so it it gives you this kind of like really interesting environment to be able to come up with interesting sequences midi grid is obviously very much about scales and getting you know interesting passages and sequences going and obviously hexel is to an extent as well but you've got a bit more flexibility and a bit more freedom and it's a bit more of a wild environment i would say but it's great for creating things like evolving pads i would say so let's make another midi channel and we'll head into artoria here and i always love pigments for stuff like this pigments one of my favorite synths that's also on sale at the moment um, through Artoria and ADSR as well, which is great. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to head over and I'm just going to go to a pad sound that I really like that I use quite a bit, which is called Ambient Wear. So Ambient Wear has got this really lovely kind of floaty element to it. If I just sort of play that directly... It's got that kind of, I don't know, bendy sort of like, you know, synth wave kind of vibe going to it. <clears throat> and what's really cool about Hexel is that you can set it up in such a note or such a way where, you know, you get these evolving passages, quite honestly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off because we know we're in D minor. I'm going to put an emitter here. And what we're looking at is the fact that we've got you know, these six emitters and they'll emit out. And that is kind of like your chain of available notes to actually trigger. So you'll see this move through. And if I turn the auto MIDI off, it won't actually make a noise. It also won't make a noise because I need to do the same thing with Hexel as I do with MIDI Grid. So I'll connect pigments, MIDI from number one, Hexel. <clears throat> and then Hexel from the drop down menu as well it's going to take some tea there's a little frog in my throat thank you very much and from there if i add the auto midi on you'll hear that very just it's very faint but i can turn that up and you can see where it kind of sparkles up and gives us this you know path essentially in all six directions so 
what I'm going to do is obviously, you know, you can see the notes in D minor here, which is really cool. So what I can do is say, right, well, I've got D available, obviously, C, A sharp, A, G, F, E, and D again. So I can use any of those notes. And let's look at what's in the available path. Well, A sharp is there. So I could put a note in that path. Again, it's in 16th notes. So it's similar to MIDI grid in that it's kind of staggered in steps on a grid. So it's just about how you manipulate that and kind of bear that in mind. So from here, you know, we've got what F. So we could add in an F there if we so choose, or we could go there. And again, obviously, the further down the hexagonal grid we are, the lower the pitch is, the higher the pitch, the more we move up. So basically, from bottom to top, it's octaves. That's kind of how it works. So from here, we can maybe add in some interesting, not like completely random, but some kind of like semi-random interesting elements to it. And what can we do here? Uh, C. So that would be, yeah. So you can see where there's a cell in between. It's the same kind of gap. So those two notes would actually play at the same time, which is quite an interesting thing. And again, we've got that and F would play at the same time. So we could actually do something a little bit more interesting as we fan sort of further out. Um, where are we? B, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp. We've got an A sharp there already. We could play it at another A sharp there. That would, I think, repeat notes. So we can play around with that. And we get these interesting little sequences. And we get that. this lovely kind of wafting generative kind of pad that we could have. There you go. So I love using this for really like interesting generative kind of style sequences that would obviously stick into D minor here by picking notes from it. E is part of that, so we could go for an E. Maybe not. Didn't sound too great. And again, just working in this manner just gives a really interesting kind of new way of interacting with synths and notes and everything else. Bad, I quite like that. And we could even put in a reverse so it reverses the path of this emitter. And of course, that just gives a lot of movement. So, you know. It, this is much more interesting than just like a held note or a held chord that a pad normally is in a track. It just gives a lot more emotion. And then from there, you know, we could drop something in that allows it to sit in the track a little bit better. You know, we can add in uh, EQ8. We can add in, say, for example, like an auto filter and just have it kind of like scoop down a little bit. and then just manipulate the filters on board within pigments. Maybe add a bit of drive. You know me, I do love a bit of drive. Add some reverb there. And then from there, almost like with that pad there's almost like an implication of like uh i don't know a kind of uh an arpeggio to it but the whole point of actually 
creating a pad in this way using Hexel is not to be like overly structured about what the melody is. It's to create these lovely, long, flowing, emotional, kind of evolving notes that evolves into a bit of a, a palette, into a bit of an aesthetic, if you will. So the whole point is not to, I mean, obviously it's in the right scale because you don't want things to sound sour, but at the same time, it just allows things to kind of wash over you and it becomes quite trippy. And it becomes, if you know anything about me, you know I like psychedelics. So it's like, you know, I'm into like psychedelic house music, psychedelic music in general, and just this kind of more fluttery, ethereal, weird kind of trippiness is something I love to put into my music. And Hexel's perfect for doing these evolving pads that just do all these really interesting things. So from there, we've obviously, you know, used one plugin, external to either ADSR or on board within Ableton, and that's pigments. So it just shows you how powerful this whole thing is and the ability to be able to, you know, just just to be able to actually you know, get everything going in an incredibly quick way. And again, similar to everything else within the ADSR family of plugins, if you will, you know, I can change this to a four bar export length, click our little compass icon here, drag and drop it onto pigments and that's literally what's being played if i fold that up over a four bar situation so actually what's quite interesting here is that i didn't realize i had some overlaps and that g overlaps a little bit so what i could actually do here and i'm just kind of thinking on my v here maybe i don't want things to overlap at all at all you know maybe i want things to you know kind of all have their own space and i can basically achieve that in most part without deleting too many notes and i can find space for everything so it just makes everything a little bit more spacious a little bit more musically intricate intricated i was going to say that's even not even a word a bit more musically intricate and can you know make things really quite interesting and again, every note has its own space. And, you know, we don't need to overly clutter things there. We could even move things to, you know, different elements. And let's play that with, yeah. So let's play that with the auto in. There we go. And that just adds so much atmosphere. And you can see once you've kind of jumped into the piano roll from Hexel, or indeed MIDI grid, indeed drum machine, you're so much further ahead of the game. You've got something to work with from minute one. So be honest, like between these three plugins and you know, actually you know, some of the others we've featured on ADSR recently, the days of actually staring at a blank DAW screen and going, I have no idea where to start, they're kind of coming to an end. Like there's endless amounts of abundant tools like this drum machine expansion that I've built for you, of course, <laughs> and the, the MIDI grid presets and everything else that are ideal jumping off spots. So if you're not feeling inspired, if you're feeling a bit like you've got a bit of writer's block, this is exactly where you need to go. So I would highly recommend it, you know, as somebody who has been an expert in helping people get tracks done, get them over the line, get people into a habit of getting their tracks ready on a very, very regular basis and help getting them signed, you know, having tools like this is essential because it helps you maintain momentum so not only from a sound quality perspective but from a workflow perspective and also ultimately from a perspective of this is what i want to achieve these plugins are absolutely gold and you can you know obviously get these on sale at the moment so absolutely amazing so yeah 
ti AC Mark, yes, it is for you, specifically only for you. I was speaking to just you <laughs> as we kind of go through the track. Uh, you are very welcome, mate, very welcome. And yeah, it is a very cool sound, thank you. Uh, ADSR says, man, that is nice, thank you very much. Yeah, people are talking about Jean-Claude Van Damme movies here. What have I, what have I, what have I walked into here? Uh, yeah, I was born in the early 80s. I listened to a lot of electronic music in the 90s, grew up on the stuff. Yeah, Jay Zaza, good to see you, mate, as per usual. Uh, you know it's in us simultaneously with other memories, freaking weird, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's just weird, isn't it? Like, it is properly, like, as we've actually kind of bought, been born through all this stuff. Quite interesting. Uh, sounds like a soundtrack from the 90s. Thank you very much. Like, it's kind of what I aspire to, to be quite honest with you. Uh, just put a bunch of effects on my rides to shape the sound. To be honest, they don't even sound like rides anymore when I'm done with them. Good. I like that. I like that little bit of a shape. And, uh, yeah, uh, bass arps for the win, basically. So, yeah, amazing stuff. Great stuff all around. So, yeah, good to see some interesting and regular faces in here, including, you know, Lost in Voids. Hope you're feeling better, mate. Uh, Abraham Clark, pleasure as always, my friend. Excellent work by the ADSR community in general. And as the chat says here, you can enjoy the demo for free and then still take advantage of the sale in the coming days. So amazing stuff. So there you go. Drum machine, Hexel, MIDI grid expansions and presets by yours truly go grab them over at adsrsounds.com we are on sale until the first of august very very cool i say we you know i'm you know i'm just a welcome guest here that is made to feel very at home and great to be with you again as always and uh, looking forward to more coming in the next few weeks we've got some plans for some other streams so keep it locked to adsr you can find me on instagram at paul nolan sound Big day for me tomorrow, I'm going to be honest with you. My debut album comes out as an artist. And it's on my new record label, one of two record labels that I'm starting. Uh, so you're more than welcome to ca to actually catch that release day on Bandcamp tomorrow. So just find me at Paul Nolan Sound. I also run an amazing community called MYT, which we've had amazing success with artists. Like I mentioned before, I coach artists to be the best that they can be. And we've had amazing success We've had artists signed to huge record labels like Dynamic, Run and Back, uh, Sublease Music, Bedrock, you name it. And our community is Flying Traum was another big one that we got recently for a couple of our members. And again, we are helping artists be all they can be. And I'm here. So again, it's busy times. Wouldn't have it any other way. And it's just a pleasure to help you guys make better music make better dance music and just in general be a you know part of the positivity of music production so it's been an absolute joy and a pleasure as per usual to be with you i am going to take my leave before i outstay my welcome and adsr never invite me back again and i shall see you soon much much love thank you very much take it easy look after yourselves <laughs>